Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Hallelujah. There's a song that has been burning my spirit. Can you take it down for me? I hope you're able to sing it. Your breath in our lungs. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. One more time, let me take it from here. It says, you give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great like this part beautiful part says it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you oh Your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath, so we pour out. the world will bow down and say you are God every man will bow down and say you are King one more time yes the world yes the world will bow down and say you are God ah. every man So let's start right now. Why would we wait? You're the King of Glory. Feel this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. King of Glory. Spirit, bless the name of the Lord. Let us be a moment of worship, deep reflection on the mercy, the faithfulness of God. Someone is giving God praise, quality praise, quality thanks, quality praise, quality thanks. Quality thanks. Go ahead, lift up your hands, bless the name of the Lord. Koinonia Abuja, Zaria, US, Canada, UK. Lift your hands and let's bless the name of the Lord. The mighty God, the King of Kings. Amen. 
Alpha, Omega, beginning, the ending. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you tonight. We declare that we love you. We declare that we love you. We declare that we love you. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. And I pray tonight that you will bless your people yet again. That you will lift your people yet again. That you will transform our lives yet again. That you will heal your people. You will deliver the oppressed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Walk up to 10 people. Tell them congratulations for making it for this first service. 10 people. Congratulations. Congratulations. Two more people and you're ready to sit. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a big hand clap, a big shout of praise. And then please you may be seated. It's good to see everyone. And um, we're honored to be having our first Koinonia Sunday service here in the UK. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's celebrate our online family now, Abuja. Give them a taste of what it feels like when we clap for you. Hallelujah. The beautiful thing about the ministry of the Spirit is that there is no distance in the Spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible says, now the Lord is that Spirit. And it says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So I welcome everyone in the name of Jesus to our family following online. The Lord will do you good in Jesus' name. Just a few salutations and then we'll get to the ministry of the word. I'm honored to um, acknowledge and appreciate the lead pastor of the Life Church, this beautiful facility, <laughs> Pastor Jock James and his wife. Let's give them a big, big God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Hallelujah. And then we have, I'm told here, Pastor Dara, uh, the parish pastor of RCCG, where, blessings to you, please. Let's honor them. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Bless you, my Please, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. Who is ready for tonight? The only way to be transformed is to have access to the word of God. Outside of the word of God, there is no possibility for transformation. By the way, I'm told we have a number of the members of this church here present tonight. Am I right on that? So if you are a member of this beautiful church, please stand. Please stand. Koinonia, let's give them a big God bless you. Big God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Please, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Now, please lend me your attention. God's method has always been and will always be his word. His method to lift is by his word. His method to transform is by his word. His method to bless is by his word. So when God wants to help a man, he makes available his word. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says he sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. That means when Satan wants to frustrate any life and any destiny, he will cause you to be careless or negligent as touching the word of God. The Bible says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, very quickly, let me refer everyone to a teaching. This is the message for those who have not listened to it. I want you to please take the time, go on our YouTube page and look for it. This is the message. There I teach on the seven doctrinal pillars that make up the teachings in this ministry we are not careless about the ministry of the word we've not been given the assignment to teach everything and to say everything there are boundaries there are coordinates god has granted us grace to serve his word but we do that in obedience and we do that with intelligence so allow me for a minute or two to recap very quickly the kinds of teachings that come from this platform number one we have been given the mandate to communicate the message of salvation. The message of salvation contained within our teachings are thoughts that lead men to acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It is our principal mandate. The Bible says God desires that all men be saved. All men. All men be saved. And then to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Number two. Through this platform, you will hear always the message of transformation. I have taught and you've heard that there is a journey beyond salvation. That salvation is only the initial experience. That is not all there is. John 17 and verse 3. This is life eternal. The Bible says that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. So the journey to salvation does not stop just at the initial declaration of your faith in Christ, there is still another layer. It is called transformation. Transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. Paul said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. It is possible for a believer to be saved and not transformed. You see that? Transformation happens by the renewing of the mind. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye renewed by, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. And by that transformation, you will prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Number three, we have been given the grace to communicate the message of empowerment. Empowerment. To empower means to make you sufficient for any job. To empower is beyond just being anointed. To empower you mentally, to empower you spiritually. The message of empowerment. This is where we emphasize the unique transforming ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Number four, very quickly, we have been given the message of the supernatural. We are conveyors of God's miracle walking power. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 15 and verse 19. Very profound statement. Romans chapter 15 and verse 14. He said, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. That means if your gospel does not capture signs and wonders, it has not been fully preached. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the Spirit of God, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Number five, we have been given grace to communicate to the body of Christ the message of purpose. The message of purpose. That means there is more to the Christian experience beyond receiving beyond having beyond claiming are we together that what gives value to every investment of the spirit upon your life is that it is connected to purpose in fact what gives value to anything you have is its ability to serve purpose if you have wealth without purpose you are called a rich fool are we together yes what gives value to every pursuit? What gives value to our receiving? What gives value to our passion to acquire, to have? 
is that we turn them into tools that serve the purposes of God. This is where we teach on kingdom advance. This is where we teach on societal transformation. We help believers know that they are supposed to transit from being people who are infants to people who are matured, empowered, and then they become witnesses. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. It says, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in Samaria, in Judea, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Number six, we have been granted grace by God to communicate to the body of Christ the message of unity and love. The message of unity and love. In addition to the message of salvation, transformation, empowerment, the supernatural purpose, we have as a sixth mandate the message of unity and love. I am convinced that without unity and love, not much can be accomplished as far as God's purposes are concerned. Because no matter how anointed you are, you cannot fulfill this mandate alone. There is a need for unity and there is a need for love. The Bible calls love the bond of perfectness. Are we together? God's nature is not power. God's nature is not wisdom. God's nature is love. So the proof that you are really transformed is not just enlightenment, but love. You do not measure transformation in the spirit just by the acquisition of spiritual information. You measure transformation to the degree to which the love of Christ is at work in you. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. And then number seven, which is the final pillar, we have been given grace to communicate the message of lasting peace and fulfillment. Lasting peace and fulfillment. This is where we help believers understand success from a biblical standpoint. Fulfillment from a biblical standpoint. We propose a template for the believer that gives him satisfaction beyond this realm, beyond the here and now. Hallelujah. That means every time you listen to any teaching whatsoever, it must carry one more or all of these signatures. Otherwise, it is not koinonia. So when we say this is koinonia, this is what we mean. That you are in an environment that affords you an opportunity to hear the gospel, to be saved, to be transformed, to be empowered, to experience the supernatural. Are we together? To experience love and unity, to experience purpose, to experience lasting success and fulfillment. Praise the name of the Lord. So you do well to get the teaching listen to it again in detail but for tonight um, we're going to be discussing something very briefly and then we'll pray the lord placed a strong burden on my heart and i believe tonight's message is first for us here and then for our global family but that this extends to the body of christ are you ready to learn perfected true knowledge perfected true knowledge i'm teaching on the topic perfected through knowledge we're going to be examining the burden of ignorance that ignorance can be a burden that a believer should not desire to carry every believer can be perfected and that perfection comes through knowledge hebrews chapter 6 please from verse 1 to 3 thank you holy spirit for your wisdom we receive grace in jesus name Paul is speaking now and he says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, he says, let us go on to perfection. Let us go on to perfection. It's a call. It's a charge. Paul is charging the people to not remain at a certain level in the spirit. He's saying, therefore, leaving. He doesn't mean forget about it. He means in addition to all that you have heard, as foundations let us go there is another layer a higher layer in the spirit let us go on to perfection he says not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards god verse 2 
of the doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Then he says, verse 3, and this we will do if God permits. Hallelujah. Let's look at Mark chapter 10, please, and verse 21. I had preached a very beautiful message. By the way, you'd want to listen to it. If you know any young man who loves God um, and is successful but is not really managing his success well, please give him this message called The Rich Young Ruler. Very profound message. The Rich Young Ruler. The Rich Young Ruler. It is a clarion call to a generation. It's a press to be wholesome, a press to be complete. And we'll take an idea from that teaching tonight. Mark chapter 10, please, verse 21. The Bible says, and Jesus beholding him, him being the rich young ruler now. So the context is that he came to Jesus and he said, um, good master, what can I do to inherit eternal life? Then Jesus replies and says, why do you call me good? There is none who is called good except God. And then he tells him, um, you know the laws. Do not do this. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not kill. And he said, well, I have done this right from my youth. I have kept it. And the Bible says Jesus beholding him. He loved him for his sincerity of heart. And then he said to him, one thing thou lackest. My teaching begins now. One thing thou lackest. You've kept certain things, you've known certain things, you've practiced certain things, the results are obvious, but you have not gotten to a state of perfection, you are not yet whole, because one thing thou lackest. May the Lord grant us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The first thing I want to establish tonight is that we have a mandate we have a mandate by god as believers among the many mandates that we have is that we must press to eventually become manifestations of the glory of god it is not just god's desire it is a mandate upon every believer that every believer in christ has this call and this mandate that you must evolve to eventually become a reflection of the glory of God. That means you become a reflection of the multifaceted dimensions that are contained in God as revealed through Christ. Are we together? So God's goal is not just to get you to be rich. God's goal is not just to get you to have a job. God's goal is not just to get you to have a good husband, good wife, good children. If that is your orientation, your Christian experience will frustrate you eventually. Because if and when you do have all of these things, you will be at a loss as to what else to do with your life. It is the reason why a lot of believers are getting tired and fed up of church, unfortunately, because they do not know that there is an end point, there is an end product to all this prayer, all this fasting, all these vigils, all these Bible studies, all these um, you know, spiritual activities. You'll be tempted to ask, to what end? Why do I pray and have to keep praying? Why do I study the Bible and have to keep studying the Bible? Why do I come to church and then I'm required to keep coming? There is an end. Are we together? God has a goal. He's going somewhere with you and and the Bible tells us that the end of it is that we eventually become manifestations of the glory of God. Beyond being a house owner, as wonderful as that is, beyond being a father, beyond being a mother, beyond being um, a graduate, beyond ha having excellent career, if you peg your Christian experience to achieving these things alone, I give you a guarantee, you will be frustrated eventually. Are we together? Yeah. So it's the first revelation that I want everybody to have that God desires that his multifaceted dimensions be made manifest in and through the saints. That eventually, not immediately, the seed of perfection, the seed of glory is born within your spirit from the moment you are saved. But it must grow. It must be nurtured. It grows from an incorruptible seed. It should re not remain a seed. It should grow to become a tree. 
And if you are that tree in John 15, then you must demonstrate it by bearing fruit. John chapter 15, he said, I am the vine. Then he says, ye are the branches. Are we together? And then he says in verse 8, he says, Herein is my Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. John 15 and verse 16, You have not chosen me, the Bible says. I like to quote these scriptures because they are so true. They've become a reality in my life. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, listen carefully, to go and bear fruit to go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain that your fruit will remain hallelujah so god's goal for you and i is that we eventually through a commitment to prayer a commitment to the word a commitment to church and all the spiritual activities we're involved with it's important that we know that god intends for us to evolve until we get to a point where we become manifestations of his glory here on earth do you believe that absolutely the bible says in romans chapter 8 from verse 18 it says i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory there you find it again there is a dimension of god's glory that will be revealed in us there is a dimension of god's glory the glory of god represents every dimension that is found in god his wisdom his power his favor his goodness so when we talk about the glory of God, we're not just talking about some cloud or some smoke. No. The wisdom of God, his glory. The favor of God, his glory. That means we get to a point where Paul calls us living epistles. Please say that after me. Living epistles. Absolutely. He says we are living epistles read by many. That someone looks at your life and within your life, they can see the beauty of God's glory, the beauty of God's wisdom, the power of God, that you give expression to the invisible God, just like Jesus did while he was on earth. That the invisible God they are able to see, they can give him definition by looking at your life. The wisdom of God that flows through you, the power of God that flows through you, the grace of God that emanates from your person. Are we together? That it compels all and sundry to know that this is how God looks. If it is true that you are the son of God, then it means you must look like your father. Someone learning now. So God desires that we become expressions of his glory. Next time you submit yourself to prayer, next time you submit yourself to learning the word, next time you come to church, have this at the back of your mind that I am God's project in motion. The project is that eventually, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, that eventually you evolve until you become a manifestation of God's glory you believe that shout amen. amen that means by this time next year that if I see you you should not be this version of you if you are still this version of you then it means you are not growing are we together now yeah the glory of God number two the second thought tonight perfected by knowledge the level of glory listen carefully please the level of glory and grace that is revealed through any believer is a function of the level of spiritual knowledge such a person has the level of glory and grace that is revealed through any believer will always be a function of the level of spiritual knowledge that such a person has that means at every point in your christian experience i can measure the dimension of god's glory that is at work in your life by the level of spiritual illumination the level of light that you have are we together yes so light translates to glory light translates to glory great light great glory little light 
limited glory are we together so that if you want to see the glory of god at work in your life you do not pursue his glory or pursue to see the manifestation of his glory by looking for the glory the glory is a byproduct of light it's a byproduct of knowledge that when you stay to contend for light high level spiritual illumination eventually your life will evolve the raw material for glory is light so the more of god's light that is at work in you through knowledge the more of that glory will be revealed in your life who is understanding me so far every dimension of glory and result in the kingdom demands a certain degree of knowledge in order to manifest now i'll tell you this and, and i say this with every sense of you know humility and respect there are many believers claiming certain dimensions of god's glory desiring to see it manifest in their lives without the requisite level of spiritual understanding that supports that manifestation i give you an instance there are so many people who want to walk in the healing anointing so many people want to walk in signs and wonders but they do not know that what you call signs and wonders what you call the miraculous is a dimension of god's glory and there is a body of revelation that is connected to that outcome if you do not press to have that body of knowledge you will only have your desire and it will remain as a desire it will never manifest are we together just because you read in your bible that they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover ah you see spiritual things are in layers and most of them are shrouded in mysteries if you read the bible as a historian you'll be disappointed many times because there are many information that the holy spirit will have to open your eyes to see between the lines so when you read it you will think he just says just go and lay hands on the sick but you've tried it many times and you know the result quite honestly that it did not work but you can leave that realm of trial and error and step into a level of perfection by knowing that every dimension of God's glory that can be made manifest is available, but not under every condition. There is a requisite body of spiritual knowledge. There is a requisite body of spiritual knowledge. Let me say that again. There is a requisite body of spiritual knowledge that is connected to every dimension of the glory of God. Influence is a dimension of the glory of God. If you desire kingdom influence, it will not happen just by claiming it. Mm -mm. You will need to press for the dimension of spiritual knowledge that is connected to that result. Who is learning? If you want to prosper in the kingdom, what you call prosperity, whether in finance or any aspect of your life, it is a dimension of God's glory. But that dimension of God's glory is connected to a body of spiritual truth. The Bible calls it marvelous light. Are we together? We are a chosen generation, he says, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. He says that we have been called forth, called out of darkness into his marvelous light. So it's important for you to know that every dimension of God's glory that is in God as revealed in and through Christ is available for the saints. However, the condition is that you must press for the level of light the level of spiritual illumination my god this is powerful it's powerful we translate our desires and we call them prayer requests and sometimes we're hoping that someone would lay hands and speak over them and there is a place for that but I am telling you, the way we transit from glory to glory is to move from light to light. Are we together? Revelation to revelation, knowledge to knowledge. In fact, show me a man who does not know anything about God's glory, but keeps pressing for light. I still show you a man who will reveal the glory of God. But show me a man who is obsessed about glory and ignores light. He is one man who will talk about dimensions of glory he will never enter into the experience of. And this, unfortunately, 
is the lot of many believers. So we know that God heals, but it never works through our lives. We know that God prospers, but it never works through our lives. We know that God wants us to make progress, but progress is never captured in our lives. Are we together? We know that God restores, but we're never able to command restoration. We know that there is such a reality in the spirit called favor, but it's never captured in our lives. It is frustrating to keep talking about things that can be, but then it never manifests. It is not the will of God. Are we together now? It's not even governed by the love of God. He's granted us access to these things already. The Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things, is, is that in your Bible? The things that God uh, has in store for them that love him. But the Bible says, but these things have been revealed to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. How many things? All things. Yea, the deep things of God. The deep things of God. The deep things of God. So if I desire a higher dimension of glory, a greater weight of glory, we call it. Are we together? It means that I must press for a certain dimension of light. Please understand this second point and then you will understand my sermon tonight. That if any dimension of God's glory is missing in your life, it is because there is a level of light that is missing. That is the one thing that you lack. Are we learning now? Thank you, Jesus. Every dimension of glory and result in the kingdom demands a certain degree of knowledge. A certain degree of knowledge. And so it looks like God is so indebted to certain believers, certain individuals, certain churches, certain pastors, certain personalities, and it looks like he seems to ignore others. It seems so, but it is not so. What governs the results is the light that you carry. Are we together? So on one hand, someone will blow a trumpet like Gideon and 32,000 people will show up. Another person will blow a trumpet. Are we together now? And nobody will show up. The difference is not the will of God. The difference is not the love of God. The same Lord is rich unto all. The difference is the light that sponsored that activity. One person will say, in the name of Jesus, be blessed. You will shout, amen, and then nothing happens. Another person says, in the name of Jesus, and literally a climate is scheduled over you. The difference is not the will of God. No. In fact, the difference is not even the presence of the Holy Spirit. No. <laughs> the difference is the light that sponsors your speakings, the light that sponsors your doings. And the Bible says, that was the true light that lighted every man. I told you, I've taught you here, that there are false lights. You know what a false light is? It carries a semblance of spirituality. It carries, it looks like the truth. It, it, it carries a, a carriage like the truth. But in the presence of situations and circumstances, it cannot demonstrate because if it is the truth, it must set free. So when the truth stands before bondage and it cannot set free, it is called a false light. Do you know what a false light is? Many ideas, some of them religious ideas, some of them age-long ideas, with all due respect, some of them traditional ideas, some of them fabrications from our frustrations. We just use our frustrations as a canvas to paint an idea about God. Who is learning? So many believers are frustrated because they are unable to see the glory of God manifest in their lives. They desire favor. Where is it? They, they say. They desire the goodness of God. Where is it? And yet there are others who are walking in such enviable dimensions of God's glory. And it looks like they were just fortunate or they were just lucky. I'm telling you, it has nothing to do with luck. It has nothing to do with fortune. It has everything to do with light. Light. There is a kind of light that when you carry, and, and I don't mean to sound proud, but if you carry, you cannot be poor. 
no the presence of that dimension of life forbids that you are without help there is a dimension of light that when you carry men cannot ignore you it doesn't matter whether they like you or not it has nothing to do with liking you are we together there is an instruction in the spirit that comes with every revelation that means the realm of the spirit has already been instructed to treat the career of light a certain way are we together it's like a spiritual code when you possess it there is an instruction within that light that's what we call dna medical people talk to me that dna seems to be an instruction is that not so that's how it is spiritually so there is a body of light that when you carry the instruction connected to it is that this believer should never beg it's a body of knowledge i want you to believe this there is a kind of light that when you carry the instruction there is this believer must never be small drop that person anywhere it doesn't matter the light that the person possesses will shift the person through that organization until you get to a point where God is glorified. Are we together? There is a kind of light that when you possess, the instruction there says no enchantment and no divination whatsoever must find expression in your life. So it doesn't matter the cursings, it doesn't matter the witchcraft, if you are a possessor, now the challenge is that believers make a lot of bold claims without verifying whether that light has come because you arise and you shine only when your light has come not when it is there it's always been there but the day it comes are we learning hmm. i read in my bible that the same lord is rich unto all doesn't matter if you are european american now from a from a physical standpoint there are differences there are advantages there are disadvantages but the word of god is an equalizer it remedies for everything your background could not give you hmm. who is learning so I understand that you came from a family that was not as privileged, but do you know that light can do something to you? It can place you in a position where right, oh dear. You see, by the mercies of God, what you are hearing tonight, my beloved people, are not cunningly devised fables. These are things I have proven with my own life. The same Lord is rich unto all. The point where your disadvantage in life stops is when your light comes. It says, until his word came. Until his word came. Until his word came. My brother, it looks like UK is treating you bad and I understand. There is a kind of light. You have not received the instruction. Are we together now? The territory, do listen, listen. The lions, when Daniel was in the lion's den, what did the lions hear? that stopped them from eating him i hope you know that was not a parable it actually happened that a man stepped into a lion's den ladies and gentlemen except if you are no longer a christian it's in your bible the bible says an angel of the lord the bible didn't even say daniel was praying an angel of the lord stepped in there and all through the night hungry lions but there was a restraint You are not the first person to be in trouble. You don't know the mystery of exemption. There is a mystery in the spirit. And you believe me on this. No. Tragedies should not be general. The believer must sustain the intelligence to exempt yourself. When there was darkness in Egypt, there was light in Goshen. It's in your Bible. Are we learning? Please sit down. Perfected through knowledge. That there is something you lack. And I want to show you today. And it's my prayer that everyone will find what is lacking. And press with the determination.
determination to get that thing out of your life so that your life will be a wholesome manifestation of God's glory in the name of Jesus Christ more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life. sing it one more time from the depth of your heart let it be a cry more love more power more of you in my life sing more love sing more power hallelujah please be seated so number one we have a mandate by God that we should eventually become expressions of the glory of God you still remember that number two that every level and dimension of glory you so desire has a body of spiritual knowledge called light that is connected to its manifestation do you understand that so far number three now listen to this before you write the existence of ignorance and darkness in any one area of the believer's life can frustrate the joy and the results experienced in another area don't assume you understand i'll, I'll, I'll read it again you just listen before you write that means the presence of darkness are we together the presence of ignorance in one area of your christian experience sustains the power to water down and frustrate the joy you are experiencing in another area he says hitherto you have asked for nothing he says ask and you will receive that your joy may be full that your joy may be full so there are many believers who seem frustrated but when you look at their lives you only see the areas where they have light and you're wondering why they are still frustrated i will tell you why because if one area does not work in your life it can depress you to a point that the nine other areas that are working in your life like you'll be learning <laughs> the bible says a woman had 10 talents treasures and one was missing and she became frustrated the presence of the nine notwithstanding because one was missing her joy depleted and she kept searching until she found that one then the bible says she called everybody to rejoice with her i will tell you why many people look successful and they are still depressed because the presence of darkness in one area of your christian experience can frustrate what is working and make it look like your whole life is a total failure for instance your prayer life can be excellent and then you are poor and broke i can tell you that your christian experience you will be shocked that even in the place of prayer the blessings that should come from that rich prayer life is watered down by the depression that comes from trying to look for a house rent mortgage issues are we together God desires us to experience wholesome victory. I hope you know that it was God who designed this system himself. Yeah. So the presence of victory in one area does not guarantee joy. For instance, I know many wealthy people, many wealthy people, very wealthy people, they will give up their millions and billions of dollars if they can find good health so on one hand when you see them you do not know they are sick you find them still depressed in a limousine still depressed in a mansion are we together still frustrated and you are wondering if only i can get 
that man's bank account there will be no reason for you know is that true you are saying that only because of the reality of your pain the same way where you are right now as angry as you are is somebody's desire and yet you've not found joy how many of you know now let me speak to uh, my dear brothers and sisters from africa how many do you know the amount of africans who believe that as soon as they arrive the european soil all of their problems talk to me so when they see you not smiling they think you are joking now i i hope you're not offended i'm just i'm just I'm just playing with you for a reason i'm saying it to explain this third point that if you get beguiled by two over ten even academically two over ten is not a two over ten is not b two over ten is not c two over ten is not what's the other one d two over ten is what two is a mark but you still failed There are many believers jumping over 2 over 10. Their destinies cannot command such glory enough to compel men to Jesus. The reason is because there's one area walking and for every one area walking, there are at least five areas of terrible frustration. My assignment is to show you that even if you are a rich young ruler, there is still one thing lacking. And Jesus said there is one thing you lack. There is one thing you lack. Hallelujah. The existence of ignorance and darkness in one area of a believer's life can frustrate the joy and the results experienced in another area. For instance, your spiritual life doing well versus your finances doing poorly. Your spiritual life doing excellently and then your health being troubled. Are we together? Guess what I wrote? This places a responsibility on the believer to identify areas of ignorance and press for knowledge in those areas until you become a portrait of wholesome excellence and perfection. This is the reason why in spite of the results that we get, we keep pressing as though we've not started. And we... We'll never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. When we know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. When we know there's more that's found in you. One more time. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. We must never allow the results experienced in some areas to blind us from seeing the darkness in other areas. We must never never allow be grateful for that which god is already doing but never allow the results you're experiencing in one area of your spiritual life blind you or stop you from seeking light in another area thank god for the health of my prayer life thank god for my finances but i'm still yet to meet the bills of my family lord i know that you are able to do this also show me the principles connected to rest in this area are we together now oh i'm doing well a great job i have a great job great pay but something is wrong with my prayer life something is wrong with my fasting something is wrong with my word life you are doing well financially but at the expense of your spiritual life father show me how i can be whole i can be vibrant financially and I can be exceptional spiritually. One does not have to suffer because of the presence of the other. Hallelujah. 
Herein lies the frustration of many believers. They do not know how to reconcile being grateful for something God is doing and having a desire that he should do more. Are we together? Thank God you've given me a child, but something is wrong with this child. And sometimes you feel guilty. Should I still ask God to do something more? Absolutely. God desires that we press on to perfection. This is what we call the covenant of peace. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. One more time. Nothing missing. One last time. Nothing missing. Do you believe there is such a reality? Yes, sir. That the believer can get to a point like Abraham in Genesis chapter 24 and verse 1. The Bible says, and now Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Bible says, read with me if you can see it projected. Ready? One, two, go. Uh-huh. And God had blessed him in how many things? So there's a way that God can come through for a man that you wake up in the morning and all you have is thanksgiving. There is such a state in a believer's life. If you don't believe it, you will never step into it. Apostle, are you saying in this wicked world I can find rest roundabout? So says the Bible. So says the Bible. And it is unto you according to your faith. No. No. You don't call what they call conspiracy, conspiracy. When you claim their pain, it becomes yours. When you claim their weaknesses, it becomes yours. I was preaching a few weeks back home and I said, I will never repeat after Satan. If Satan says you are a failure, I would not repeat it. No. I prophesied as I was commanded. If the Holy Spirit speaks, then I speak again. Homologio. That's where the word confession comes from. It matters who you are repeating after. Are we together? Now, let's consider one other thing. We're making progress. How do you know the areas of ignorance and darkness in your life? This is very powerful now. How do I know that there is an area of ignorance and darkness in my life? Because the, the call is to press towards perfection. The call is to press to become the most accurate portrait of a believer that you can become. That you become such a portrait of the believer that many people will see Jesus in his purest form revealed through your life. Are we together now? That you do not misrepresent Jesus when people see you. That every aspect of your life becomes wholesome. It may not happen initially, but it must become your project. And you never rest. The Bible says there remained a rest for the people of God. There remained a rest. You don't feel bad if you've not attained onto that state, but it must become a project. When you wake up in the morning, you know that I can be perfected by knowledge. Here and now, not in the sweet by and by. Here and now, there is such a possibility. That's why God gave us his word. That's why God gave us the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How do I know? The areas of ignorance and darkness in my life. I'll give you three keys very quickly. Number one, by looking onto Jesus. The first way you know the area that is not working is to compare your life with this standard called Jesus. If you cannot look onto Jesus, your verdict about yourself will be wrong. You need to look at Jesus because he's our pattern man, the Bible says. He's the portrait. Jesus Christ is God's expectation about the believer personified. God's expectation about the believer personified. God's expectation about the believer personified is called Jesus. Jesus is not an idea. He's a person. Are we together? The Bible says when he came, he was full of grace and truth. So how did Jesus walk upon the earth? Was he limited? What did he do in the presence of challenges? How many of you know that his dying was not a product of weakness? It was to fulfill prophecy. Jesus said, I have the power to lay it down. I also have the power to pick it up. Until he gave himself, he was indomitable. No one could kill him. It didn't matter the antagonisms around his time. 
he would walk freely move freely heal the sick demon saw him and ran away and the bible says as he is not even as he was as he is it says so are we except we do not believe the word of god the believer's faith must be anchored upon the integrity of scripture let god be true and every man a liar it doesn't matter what your current spiritual experience is don't feel condemned but don't condone limitations don't condone it let it be your project knowing that i have not paul said not that i have already attained i have not attained but this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth for the things that are before me he uses a brilliant expression i press I press, not I desire, not I wish, not I hope. I press towards the mark. There is a mark. There is a mark, ladies and gentlemen. The mark of the high calling. The high calling. This is what Paul meant when he said the sufferings of our present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. How do I know the areas of darkness in my life? By looking unto Jesus. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he was healthy and sound. Sound enough to fulfill his father's assignment. So by using the portrait Jesus, I have a right to fight every sickness troubling my life. Call it a blood disease, with all due respect, call it a genotype issue. Whatever it is, it becomes your project to fight it. Because you have looked unto Jesus. He becomes the worthy reference, not your background, Jesus. Every time Jesus had a need, there was a way the answer came. Whether it was through a fish, whether it was through a woman with an alabaster box, that means there are systems of supplies. If you are like Jesus... There was no land, there was no territory he went to. Fulfilling the father's assignment, the supplies were not there. Please do not say UK is a harsh place. It is unto you according to your faith. Now, this is, this is, forgive me, forgive me in advance, forgive me. But I'm provoking you unto godliness. One time they came to embarrass him on account of the gospel. And he said, Peter, reach for the fish. What should a fish be doing with a coin that means god can bend over to use unusual situations for his namesake it's not about a fish it's not about a coin it's about a strategy that is not usual yes i know that the natural cause for things is that you can get a property and gradually through your job yes there is a place for diligence but make sure you don't ignore a fish when you see it coming. A fish can be a mysterious helper that shows up in your life once, used by God to open a door for you and never returns. The fish did not bring coin every day. When you now want to make the fish bring coin every day, you are walking in violation with God's principle. But as you obey God, once in a while, that fish will come. Once in a while. Yes. It's a system of advantage. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, we worship you. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, we worship you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Kadosh, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Kadosh, we worship you. One more time. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, we worship you. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, we worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Kadosh, we worship you. So we are provoked unto perfection when we look at the perfect portrait, Jesus. 
did Jesus ever need the assistance of men and lacked men he said when I sent you lackest thou anything anything hmm. anything when I sent you not when you went when I sent you lackest thou anything when I sent you many of you do not know you are sent that's why the resources to back you is not yet there you still have the mentality of just trying to make it make ends meet you say but if you know you are an ambassador then you know the jealousy of heaven there is an investment upon you I want you to believe this please be seated for a while so the way we identify the areas of darkness in our lives ladies and gentlemen people of God and, and I hope our online family are following very carefully you look on to Jesus if you do not look on to Jesus you will be satisfied in the midst of nothing Jesus is the reference if your prayer life is going down and it's not a source of concern it's because you've not looked on to Jesus when you look on to Jesus it will provoke you that the disparity is too wide you are frustrating the grace of God and then it, it calls you. This is the correct. You should not be condemned. No. His presence does not condemn. But it challenges you that there is a highest, a higher bar that you must lift over your life. Are we together? When Jesus needed to have a triumphant entry, he said, go to the street whose roads divide. You will find a cult that no man had ridden on. I've shared the mystery with you. There are people holding things they were not supposed to use. It's for you. They are only caretakers. Now, I'm not saying it from a carnal standpoint. <laughs> there are people who have proven to be faithful stewards. And God will give them things. And they will, be, they will have an instruction on it. Keep it until the person who will use it comes. Then give it to them. The Bible says a colt that no man had ridden on. The question is, why will I buy a colt and not ride on it? The person kept it there. And he says, when they ask you, tell them the master, the real owner has come. Are we together? There are people holding properties today in UK. Honestly speaking, they know it is not their own. Eventually, by a mystery only God can tell. I'm not talking of taking people's property as a fraudster. I'm with the dignity of kingdom integrity, God opening mysterious doors for you. That when people ask you, how did you get this property? You will tell them, I know the equation is diligence plus wisdom plus relationships plus God. That's what produced that kind of answer. Are we together? So we know the area of darkness in our lives. By looking onto Jesus, comparing our current spiritual state using the reference Jesus. Number two, how do we know the areas of ignorance and darkness in our lives? Are you ready for number two? By looking onto exceptional models, exceptional human models who have excelled in life. We look onto Jesus. But we also look on to exceptional human models. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you. I confess to you that I've not met many of them. But my goodness, I have met exceptional people. I have met people who have taken the word of God and given it frame in their lives. They have built an exceptional and an enviable Christian life. You talk of character, you will find it. You talk of godliness, you will find it. You talk of wealth, you will find it. Well-behaved children, you will find it. Influence, you will find it. They are such an enviable portrait of Jesus. There are such people on earth. If you seek, you will find. My prayer is that every one of us, that we evolve to become such portraits. That when people are looking to see the possibilities that God can rot through a man, God recommends you within a territory. When people are saying, I, I need to know that God answers prayer, God will send you as a living epistle that they can read his faithfulness through your life 
and know that God answers prayer. Are we together? The Bible calls us living epistles. You know what that means? That your life should be a continuation of somebody's Bible study. That when they look at your life, where they stopped in their room, you become the opening of their Bible. And they keep reading possibilities through your life. Hallelujah. Does God bless? You can say yes without believing it. But let me tell you how God answers you. He sends a man he has blessed. And he says, I stand as a witness that God prospers. And God says, follow them. Does God anoint? Oh yes, I think he did in the Bible. Then he sends a man who is an epitome of his hand and his grace. Can the nature of God really be made manifest in the life of a man in this our bedeviled world? Then he sends a man with solid character and he stands before you that even in a crooked and a perverse generation, you can stand for Christ. Are we learning? living epistles so we look on to jesus to see the areas of darkness in our lives and to contend to be like him then we look on to men who by the sacrifice of alignment have been able to attain onto a commendable level of perfection yes sir they have captured within their space a rich heritage of spiritual possibilities and on account of that god can recommend them across territories as worthy references so when you are praying and say father please i want you to bring this is why listen do you know why testimonies are powerful because men through testimonies personify possibilities we have one of our precious ladies here who gave her testimony during the sound of revival 20 how many weeks 23 weeks she gave birth to a baby at 23 weeks. That baby should die. But God. So, you see that now. A testimony becomes a sign and a wonder when you can read the letter that comes with it. Every miracle has a letter from heaven. Most people celebrate the miracle, but they don't read the letter. There is every miracle is a letter from Jesus to you. I am still alive. I still walk wonders. I can still do it again and again and again and again and again. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. That's what God is doing over someone's life. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy and you turn it for good when peter and john stood at gate beautiful the crippled man, tired, frustrated. I like what Peter said. Look on us. A man can tell you, look on us. And it is not pride. He's saying there's something we carry. Not all. We are still students of the spirit. But we've made commendable progress to inspire you. Look on us. I'm praying that after today's service, that someone can look at someone in your family and say, we are still students in the school of the spirit, but as touching God's faithfulness, look on us, look on us. God has prospered, look on us. God has helped, look on us. God can increase, look on us. God can restore. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. Listen, a man can tell other men, look on us. Not with the attitude of pride as touching the mercy of God that you've made commendable progress as far as attaining perfection is concerned you can tell people I have not found every key but I found certain keys and I can give it to you while I discover others oh there are keys there are keys there are keys and not everyone is looking for every key what you are looking for has been found by someone already 
are we together now the favor you seek the keys that command favor have been found i tell you they've been found by certain people the key to the presence of god has been found by certain people the key is to commanding signs and wonders not everyone is still looking for it there are men by grace and mercy who have found it it's called laying hold on eternal life you can give substance to your christian experience yes sir yes sir don't generalize weaknesses no not everybody is having your weakness there are people who have found strength the bible says god who had commanded light to shine not into out of there are people who have manipulated dark they've manipulated darkness till light came out of it they stood in their darkness and found god there there is light in every darkness the bible did not say god commanded light to shine into uh -uh. there are times there's no hope of light coming in but out of darkness out of pain out of tragedy out of death life can still come out so when a man tells you that i know how to prosper by god don't argue till you know the darkness that light came out from are you hearing what i'm saying when someone tells you god heals don't argue till you find out the kind of darkness that that light came out from there is light in darkness when a man tells you god can prosper you in ministry don't argue till you find out the darkness when the man says god can prosper you in a strange land regardless who likes you or otherwise don't argue until you find out the darkness when god sends light into darkness that is him helping you but when god brings light out of darkness he's making something that he used your pain as a raw material and brought light out of it listen there are people who stepped into a level of the healing anointing not by reading books they were almost dying they were almost dying everybody anointed laid hands on them they were left for dead and they shut their doors they said god of heaven i'm almost dying they read the bible themselves till they found the key that is light coming out of darkness and out of that pain will come a healing ministry don't you question that kind of anointing i tell you listen we live in a world where we do not respect the pain of people we trivialize the pain of people because light has already come out of the darkness there are people who came into this beautiful nation with no assistance whatsoever they were left in trouble they learned how to cry by experience not mentorship by experience they cried on to everything till they found god so when you come and they tell you god is able to bring people out don't argue with them they have known how to produce light out of darkness are we together let me give you the third one i want us to pray perfected by knowledge that you can live where you are now in the spirit you can live where you are now by the power of the holy spirit i'm seeing a wind just just moving around it's what i'm seeing in the spirit it's what i'm seeing in the spirit and there are people who are going to be drinking of this wine of the spirit it is grace listen when i mentioned this light coming out of darkness i felt a strong anointing on that statement there are people who have stepped into levels in the spirit out of your darkness your frustration your pain it looks like a solution is not coming there is light there you need to stop looking outside the oil is in your house the oil is in your house even if you go out to meet the prophet you will need to return back to your house and shut the door there's something you can do with that oil and it begins to multiply 
there's something you can do god can command light to shine out of not into out of out of pain can come glory out of frustration can come grace hallelujah please be seated I remember it was out of desperation mixed with frustration that I had my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. I knew there was something more. I saw the way people did ministry and I said, no, there has to be a way. I read my Bible and I saw the genuine power of the Spirit. I read through history, the lives of men like T.L. Osborne, Maurice Cerullo, these great men, what did they carry? What did they see? I knew something was wrong. And I made up my mind that I did not want to do ministry, wasting my time and joining a queue in envy and jealousy and bitterness because of lack of results. And I said, God, I will seek you till I find you. I will seek you till I find you. I will seek you till I find you. And I was lying on the floor that night praying when the Lord Jesus walked into my room. When he stepped into my room, I saw him in his glory, brilliance, majesty, stood before me. I was shaking. I couldn't explain what was happening to me. What sort of an experience is this? This is the Jesus in the Bible that everybody talked about. Ha. He never spoke a word to me. All he did was to stretch his hands towards me and light, light from heaven, light from the King, light from the Savior. As that light emanated my being, it was as if I was going to burst into pieces. Then he left. How he left, I cannot explain. He didn't come through a door. He didn't leave through a door. Hallelujah. From the time Jesus walked out of my room, there was a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. I saw things I never studied. How I understood them is something that only God can help to explain. What was the meaning of this mystery? What is this happening to me? The supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. My eyes started opening to see angels and to see a lot of supernatural things. What is this strange thing? It took me more than one year to recover from that experience more than one year see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear we see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain let it rain yeah. open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it Let it rain, let it rain. Please be seated. We look unto Jesus to find the areas of darkness in our lives. We look on to exceptional models 
to find the areas of darkness in our lives number three we look at the areas of pain limitations and struggles to know the areas we need to press for perfection you can use the index of pain limitations and struggles pain limitations and struggles a lady is going to begin to start laughing in the spirit this is a supernatural laughter by the spirit by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory So we look at the areas of pain, we look at the areas of limitations, and we look at the areas of struggles as pointers that there is darkness existing within that area. If your area of pain, struggle, and limitation is your finances, then it means there is darkness there. You must be on a project. If the area of pain and limitation is that in spite of the fact that you are born again satan seems to have an advantage over you you are weak spiritually it means there is a body of knowledge that needs to cover that gap who is learning yeah so we look on to jesus as that reference to help us see the area of darkness in our lives we look on to worthy models models who have demonstrated exceptional victory people who have laid hold on eternal life by grace and by mercy they've made commendable spiritual progress worthy enough to be references while we look up to jesus and then number three you use your pain you use your struggles and you use your limitations as a sign that there is darkness within an area if you can take note of these three things then you are ready to step on to perfection very quickly let me give you i'm not going to have the time to teach them i will just list them and then we pray keys to pressing for more the keys that help you to step into perfection haven't shown you how to identify areas of darkness Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Luke 15, please, 8 and 9. The Bible talks about a very strange woman in a parable. Either what woman having 10 pieces of silver? What did she have initially? 10. The Bible says if she loses one piece, the Bible says the first thing she does is to light a candle. Every time you desire perfection, she started with 10 but lost one. It is a waste to search in darkness. And so the first thing she does is to light a candle. To light a candle. Not to have a candle. You can have a candle. But if that candle is not lit, you will never find what you are looking for. So the Bible says, number one, she lights a candle. And then number two, she gets a broom. Goodness. You know what that broom is? Your broom is your zeal. Your broom is your passion. The broom there does not just mean the physical broom or whatever that you use. With that zeal, that passion likened to a broom the bible says with the candle 
in partnership with her passion she begins to sweep the house and seek diligently seek diligently seek diligently diligently can mean keep seeking after three years diligently can mean keep seeking after five years i will not stop till i find it i was given 10 i had a vision and i saw 10 it must be 10 in my life wherever the others are missing i will find them is someone learning now the bible says the woman was having 10 and she insisted that it must be 10. so every time you search the bible if you see healing there breakthrough increase favor and then you look at your life it's like the 10 you were given but right now you have to get a candle get a candle quickly and use your zeal as a broom begin to search in one church service you will find the fourth treasure in one convention you will find the fifth in your place of prayer you will find the sixth this is how you will keep picking them until you get to that level of perfection there are many like this woman fortunate for her she lost only one i can tell you there are some who have lost all but the good news is that they all fell in the room that means if you know how to search you will not find them in one location for another you may find by pressing in prayer for another like you'll be learning you will find by sitting down under structured mentorship to learn but by all godly means if you can light that candle you are ready to get into perfection without your candle lit you will not find it are we together there are people based on your preordination there are certain unctions certain graces you should walk in but as it is now you've not been able to find it it is available it is that your hunger you have light but you don't have a broom you have access to men who can teach you but you don't have the requisite level of passion to pursue till you find mm. so let me give you the keys the Bible says, let's finish the scripture, that she lit a candle and swept through the house and diligently sought till she found it. What happened when she found it? Verse 9. And when she had found it, not if, and when she had found it, the Bible says she called her friends and her neighbors together saying, rejoice with me for I have found the peace which I had lost. There are some of you, you will not need to call friends. They will see your light and they will come. They are the Gentiles that will come to your light. And even their kings will come to the brightness of their rising. They will say, we have learned by experience that God is with you. The testimony of Laban over Jacob is what will be someone's testimony. That men will come and say, we have consulted. By what means do you excel in the UK? By what means is your church, your ministry rising and excelling? It is evidence that the hand of God is upon you. It is evident that regardless the economy, you found a way in the spirit to maintain victory keys number one let's hurry up the first key if you must press for more is called meekness meekness the willingness to learn the recognition that there is always more james 1 21 the first key for anyone who intends to press towards perfection leaving these elementary levels in the spirit to a higher level in the spirit it says wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness this is how we receive in the kingdom meekness is a quality of humility but it's beyond humility you can be humble and not be teachable There are many humble people who are not teachable so meekness is the the it comes from an orientation that there is always more than your experience has captured and you must be willing to learn that more are we together 
I can tell you this the Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth the reason why many people remain stunted in their faith adventure is that they are not meek they do not want to learn they do not want to learn we call it a know-it-all mentality even in the presence of obvious failure there are people who will not sit down and learn never be embarrassed if you find out there is an area you do not know sit down be meek to learn don't say I'm a man of God no your member can teach you something and you must learn are we together there are all kinds of teachers scattered around our space don't be too proud to learn 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 from children learn from subordinates learn from contemporaries learn from those who are above you learn from pain let everything be a teacher if you make everything a teacher you will learn faster what mentorship omits pain will teach quickly you see that hmm. what pain omits time will teach everything can teach but it will only teach a student number two the second key to pressing for more if you desire perfection is that you must consciously identify the areas of ignorance and frustrations in your life identify them if you cannot define your pain you can't get a solution the first thing the doctor does when you go to the hospital is not to treat you is to diagnose the condition am i right on that how many of you know that many diseases have similar symptoms headache is generally a symptom that goes with any kind of disease whatsoever so it will be costly to assume that just because you have headache it is just headache medical science would teach us that headache is oftentimes a response to something deeper maybe something higher are we together you must give definition to your frustration what is the area of frustration i need to define this i don't have destiny relationships they don't work i am a christian but as soon as someone comes into my life the lifespan of any valuable relationship in my life is one month it means there's something there's an area of darkness there i said it while we we're having the retreat with the leaders yesterday if it fails many times then you are the cause most times when things fail we look outward but if it fails again and again and again and again with you look inwards if the same driver bad driver drives any vehicle he will crash it so you can change the vehicle from a bmw to a mercedes-benz if it's the same driver it will be the same result are we learning this is very important identify the areas let me challenge you whilst you're writing can you write at least one area where you are trusting god you are writing that one area as per the frustration the limitations you have honestly discerned that has come from that area maybe it's prayerlessness honestly maybe it's lack of character maybe it's trouble in your finances maybe your relationships maybe your home maybe leadership you are wanting in that area you are a good person but you are not able to put a team together because you do not understand you don't have the intelligence that makes for leadership identify that area unashamedly so number one you must have meekness if you want to press towards perfection number two you must define your areas of frustration define your areas of frustration identify the areas of ignorance and frustration number three very quickly seek for knowledge seek for knowledge don't wait for knowledge seek for knowledge it is wrong to wait for knowledge you seek for knowledge the university does not go around looking for students the student who wants to be educated finds his way the uni the hospital does not go around looking for patients traditionally speaking every patient who believes he's sick enough finds his way to the hospital the assignment of the hospital is to be equipped enough to treat you 
But even when you are weak, neighbors can help you. They have what is called an emergency center in every hospital, but the patient, they will seldom come to meet you at home except you invite them. But they, it always starts from the person. Nobody just comes to bump into your house without an invitation and says, I want to treat you. You can sue them. Am I right on that? You will have to call. Call through the lines or go to the hospital directly and then they come rushing. There's an ambulance waiting, but without your call, they won't come. Many people are waiting for knowledge to come and meet them. It is arrogant for a student to keep his teacher waiting. You must be ready. Dr. Modok will say adaptation is proof of honor. You will need to bend over backwards many times for the sake of what you want to learn. Who is learning tonight? So meekness, you identify the areas of ignorance, then you seek knowledge. And you seek knowledge primarily from scripture and then from relevant spiritual resources. Let me say that. You seek knowledge primarily from scripture and then from relevant spiritual resources. Proverbs chapter 2, please. 1 from verse 1. Let's hurry up so that we can pray. You seek knowledge, number one, from scripture, and then number two, relevant spiritual resources. My son, it says, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom, follow carefully now, and apply thine heart unto understanding, verse three. It says, yeah, if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding, you see that now, verse four, if thou seekest her as silver, remember our silver, the parable? It says, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hid treasures, Verse 6. Okay, verse 5. He said, Thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. The final verse 6. It says, For the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding, but only to the one who is passionate to seek. You see that the parable Jesus was giving, this was what Solomon saw. A woman seeking silver, like a treasure missing. He says, If you will seek for knowledge that way, if you will seek for it like something valuable that has been missing don't freelance your search for knowledge if occasions work well no it doesn't matter how i feel i will go for knowledge i cannot end this year 2024 the way i started hallelujah seek for knowledge first from scripture and then from relevant spiritual resources don't waste your time acquiring knowledge that is useless and cannot profit you. Remember, I told you there are false lights. Decongest your life. Find knowledge that works. Don't be emotionally connected to error. Did you hear what I said? Don't be emotionally connected to error. You know it does not work, and yet you are so connected you will not leave it. Number four, the fourth key, you desire to press for perfection through knowledge, you must cry for help in the place of prayer. Please note these keys. Number one, meekness, the attitude of meekness. Number two, to identify consciously the areas of ignorance and frustration in your life. List them, name them so you deal with them. Number three, seek knowledge primarily from scripture and then from relevant spiritual materials. Number four, cry for help for God's sake in the place of prayer. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse three. Call unto me, the Bible says, and I will answer. It says, I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Psalm 61 from verse 1 and 2. You must learn how to cry for help. You want to step towards perfection? You must thank God for what he's done, he's doing in your life. But you must cry for help along the areas of darkness. It says, hear my cry, O God. Then he says, attend unto my prayer. Verse 2. 
from the ends of the earth will I cry unto you. He says, when my heart is overwhelmed, he says, lead me to the rock that is, the rock that is, not a rock that is available, a rock that is higher. This rock you see is not talking about what you know, not rock like geography. Are we together? That's a metaphor. It doesn't mean a rock like a mountain. Mm -mm. Lead me to a rock, but it, let it be a rock that is higher. Let it be a rock that is higher. Let it be a man that is higher. Let it be a platform that is higher. Lead me. Lead me. I can't get there by myself. So I cry. I don't know the sermon. I don't know the book that I will buy. But lead me. Lead me to a rock. The, it didn't say I will find a rock. Lead me. If you lead me, it makes the journey shorter for me. So I don't waste my time rigmaroling in error, moving from pillar to post, wasting my years only to find shadows. Lead me. Someone say lead me. Lead. Cry it from your heart. Lead me. May God answer that prayer speedily. For some of you, you will step into a Christian bookstore and your eyes will go straight to a book. Maybe just 50 pages, but that becomes the answer to your prayer and fasting. You have been led. Lead me to a rock higher than me. Have you heard many people who would tell you, I, sometimes I'm humbled hearing these testimonies. They would tell you, I never knew anything about apostle, never knew anything about koinonia. I was just crawling. You were not just crawling. You were led. This is a prayer. It says, lead me to a rock. Listen, I'm saying this so that after this meeting, you will go and pray. Lord, there is a way in the UK. Please lead me. I'm tired of guessing my way. All my guesses have only multiplied pain. Lead me to a rock. Lead me to a rock, a place, a person. Lead me to a rock, a platform, a ministry. Lead me to a rock that is higher. lead me lead me there were times i desired certain graces and i prayed honestly lead me one meeting after the other one book after the other one video after the other i remember buying the materials of charles and francis hunter of late their entire 12 or was it 16 hours healing videos vhs how i found these people i do not know when I needed to walk upon my mind because I found out that I was poor in leadership and administration. My ministerial training did not capture teachings in leadership and administration. And I knew I had to outsource it. I said, Lord, lead me. I remember for one of the persons who now became a great mentor, the hand of God came upon me literally and I was typing. And that's how the name came out. And from that day, one video, one 19 minutes video, and it transformed my life forever. It began a journey that supplemented for my deficiencies in the areas of leadership and administration. Are we learning now? Don't pamper failure. Deal with it fast. Deal with it. Treat failure like cancer. Treat failure like cancer. Only, only an unserious person will be told you have cancer and it's growing and multiplying in a hurry and then you don't do anything about it. Unfortunately, there are many people who are having the cancer of everything spiritually and yet they are lying down quietly as if everything is alright. Now, when you find an area that is not working, let that be your project. If you will pray, pray fast. If you will fast, fast on time. If you will study the word, don't postpone. It would, today is the day of salvation. And you begin to deal with it and don't stop till you win. You tried to set up a church and it did not work. Ah, okay, forgive yourself quickly and don't start another one. Go and buy books on church growth. Buy books on church growth and stay and study and stay and study and pray out of that revelation let your revelation come then in the presence of light you can say nevertheless at thy word you go back again and this time you will catch fish hallelujah let me give you the final key then we'll rise to pray so you cry for help in the place of prayer that God leads you 
to a rock that is higher than you. Can I give you the final key? If you desire to press for perfection through knowledge, the final key I leave with you tonight, dear people here in the UK and then our global family, you must submit to mentorship. Mentorship subsidizes the price that you will pay for a glorious destiny. Mentorship subsidizes the price that you will pay. It grants you an opportunity to drink from people's experience without the pain factor. Hmm. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. What mentorship will give you in one day, 10 years struggles will not give you. Believe me on that. It's amazing. Your mountain is relative to your mindset. Your mountain is relative to the understanding that is confronting it. What you call a mountain is something someone is standing on. Are we together now? Yeah. Mentorship deflates challenges. Sometimes you can be crying, oh, I have all this problem, and you see someone who just laughs and says, don't worry, it's a very simple thing. A, B, C, D, and you find your way out. Can you imagine that this woman ran to the prophet and said, I'm in trouble. Two of my children are about to be taken. Look how he trivialized her problem. Don't worry, madam. What do you have in your house? Nothing, I'm telling you. There's an emergency. It's amazing how your lamentation does not affect me. You can be crying and shouting and someone says, it's all right. It's all right. I'm leaving tomorrow. And the person says, I just came out of jail. <laughs> I'm saying it's all right. Don't, um, don't, don't give yourself. It is comforting. The Bible said to comfort others with the same comfort that you have received. There are people who have gone through the pain for you. It's unwise to go through it again. Mm -hmm. Don't try to dig a new well when there is an oasis springing forth water. Carry your jars and fill it quickly and be on your way. Because you can be digging that well and there are Philistines close to you. Someone has fought already. They dug the well, he covered it, dug the well, covered it, dug the well. He's dug the well for you. It's called Jacob's well. When you find Jacob's well, don't try to dig again. Drink from it and go on with the journey. He sends a word to Jacob, but it lightens upon Israel. There are people who have gone through all of that pain. They've made the business mistakes. Don't make it again. Let mentorship help you jump the step. Are we together? They've been careless with their lives and they've paid the price. Learn from them. It's wise to learn from experience, but not your experience. There are always people who have gone ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, the final recap and we pray. You desire to press for perfection. Number one, meekness. Receive grace to be meek. Number two, identify areas of ignorance and frustration. Don't assume. Define them and confront them. Number three, seek knowledge. Primarily from scripture. Don't go around searching for devilish materials to complicate your life. Are we together? You are already in the pit. The way out is to stop digging. Let me give this as an honest counsel. Thank God I'm talking to Koinonia. Be mindful of the things and the places you try to search for solution from. I can tell you sufficient is the intelligence to bail you out if you can find it. Are we together? With all due respect, let me challenge you, don't dapple into satanic, demonic, occultic materials because you are trying to search for a solution. It may give you a semblance of succor, but you believe me, it would plunge you deeper. Are we together now? Satan is a bad businessman. Don't do business with him. He steals, he kills, he destroys. What sort of business is that? And you want to do business with such a man? No. A man who steals, even if he steals alone, he's still bad. Then he kills on it. Then he destroys. Run away. Don't do that. A bad bargain. Jesus said, I am come that ye may have life. 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 You know what life is? Life does not just mean the ability to breathe well. Life means every provision that upgrades you to the God class in experience is called life. 
every, every provision that can exalt a believer to the God class. Wisdom, life, favor, life, open doors, life. Whatever can put you in a state of sufficiency so that you reflect the Christ in experience is called life. Jesus said, this is what I came to give you. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray. As for me, I have made up my mind that on this journey towards perfection, this journey towards becoming the most accurate portrait of Christ that I become, there is no stopping for me. I'm calling you tonight, Koinonia UK, Koinonia Global, join me on this journey that regardless the achievements, I know you are a great prophet. I know you are a great man of God. I know you are a great uh, businessman. But why don't you lay aside the things that are before and press? There is still something more. The level of anointing you are walking in is commendable, but not enough. Not enough to confront the darkness that is waiting in your tomorrow. So you must press. You must press. You must press in the name of Jesus Christ. You must press. My call for everyone tonight is that you don't just listen to this as a wonderful Sunday sermon. I hope I was able to provoke you onto godliness. That you leave this now with sound of revival and all of these times. You have something to work on for the next season of your life. You go back and you open up these notes, listen to this teaching again, and you get angry in your spirit. Lord, I press for perfection. Church cannot be the same again. My life cannot be the same again. My Christian experience cannot be the same again. Finances have done well. My health is where there's darkness. I'm going to buy a book on health. Jehovah Rapha must be a revelation for me. I will not wait until the day cancer kills me. I will begin to press until I find it. Please rise up on your feet. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorified one thing thou lackest you are spiritual but don't be silent on that financial situation it is the one thing you lack you are a brilliant person but you lack character it is an area that you found wanting. Work on it. You are a person of solid character, but you have no grace. Your head is dry and void of oil. And so you need to pray, Lord, add grace to my character. For someone, add character to the wisdom you have given me. For someone, you are an exceptional teacher of the word but you are a very bad leader. You need to cry, this area of darkness. Tonight we are going to pray very briefly as we wrap up. The one thing that you lack is the one thing that stops you from attaining onto perfection. Thank God for the things that you have done, the strides in the spirit. But God is calling us to perfection someone in the next two three minutes i leave you alone with your maker your king i'd like you to cry from the depth of your heart pour out your heart to jesus go ahead and cry go ahead and pray go ahead and pray koinonia abuja make sure you are praying let it be from the depth of your heart my dear people cry Lord, I desire to be perfected by knowledge. There is a body of light 
there is a body of spiritual illumination missing in my life missing in my ministry missing over my destiny while celebrating you for the mighty things you have done in the various areas of my life where i've experienced victory i cry that this area of defeat this area of defeat this area of frustration this area of limitation limitation in ministry limitation in my home limitation in my destiny limitation in my spiritual life i bring it under arrest and i obtain grace go ahead and pray go ahead and pray one minute you are crying unto the lord let it be from the depth of your heart till the nations see jesus 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 lift it up lift it up lift it up glorify till the nations see jesus lift it up exalted till the nations see jesus lift it up glorify see the army of the lord marching in the name of jehovah jehovah we're the army of the lord marching in the name of jehovah jehovah i see the army of the lord marching in the name of jehovah jehovah we're the army of the lord marching in the name of jehovah jehovah I, 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 I. See Jesus lifted up, exalted till the nations. See Jesus lifted up, glorified. Hallelujah. Dave, come and sing for me, Empty Without You. So he sang this song yesterday while we were. I want to leave you all with this song. It's a very powerful song. I want you to sing it for me. You want to use your guitar? Okay, go ahead. Make it fast. We're praying. And um, I want to leave you with this, Koinonia UK. We are pressing for perfection. Thank God for Sound of Revival. Thank God for the workers meeting. Thank God for come up hither. Thank God for the many beautiful things that he's doing in our lives. But let me tell you this, we will never settle for less. Thank God for the souls that have been saved. Thank God for the lives that have been transformed. But for the sake of one more person left to be healed, we will pray for the sake of one more person left to be changed for the sake of one more soul left somewhere we wouldn't stop we will keep building we will fast we will pray we will build capacity are we together now but let me tell you this in all your getting in all your pressing 
if you lose out with Jesus, you are truly empty. Go ahead, Dave. I could ride the fastest cars and private planes, but still wind up here. I could get follows and fans and these perks of fame and still wind up here. Empty without you. No matter what else I have, I'm empty without you, Jesus. Ooh, empty without you, without you, oh God. Mm. I could have faith to move mountains, even prophesy, and still wind up here. So I pray with all my heart, let your love abound in me till this world can see that we are empty without you. And we are nothing without you, nothing without you. Oh, nothing without you. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. I asked Dave to sing that song because I want to make the final altar call for now. I believe that in the midst of all of these people here gathered tonight, and the many who are following by way of television, by way of the internet, there has to be someone tonight who is an apostle. You are talking about pressing towards perfection. I have not even started the journey. I've been around church. I have a Christian name, perhaps related to a Christian, perhaps related to a pastor, perhaps connected to a mission family. I'm not asking you how related you are. I'm asking you if you know Jesus. And I want to make this altar call for someone. I'm just looking for one sincere person, one honest person who on hearing everything tonight, you are saying, I don't want to play games again, tired of church. I'm going to count one to five. And everywhere at all, whether at this auditorium and anywhere at all across, I'm going to count one to five. I want you to leave your seat and come stand right here with me and say, Apostle, I want to make it right with Jesus. I begin my counting now. One. God bless you. Koinonia, bless them as they come. Come. God bless you. We love you. Come. 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 I believe someone is winning that war tonight, finally, come. Young and old, you're welcome, come, come to Jesus. It's giving you a new beginning. God bless you, God bless you, sir. God bless you, my brother. 
Bless you, my sister. Come on, Koinonia, are you celebrating them? Someone is coming from Abuja. Can you move those who are connected, uh, whether online, particularly Koinonia Abuja? Here's an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. Make your way to the stage. Make your way to the stage right now. Someone will be there to pray with you. Let's give them a big God bless you. Are you celebrating a harvest for Jesus? For Jesus. It is true that we are empty without you. Empty without you. Without you. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, let me have your attention for just one moment. I know that you are giving a card. All of you should have a card. And please ensure that they have the card. And um, where they need any help, we'll be glad to provide the help needed. But I want to say thank you. Please let me have your attention for one minute. Thank you for making this noble decision. I want you to know that this is the wisest decision any man can make in this side of God's kingdom. The decision to be reconnected back to your source, to be reconnected back to Jesus. And I thank you for the courage to step out here. And as I'm praying for them, I'm also praying for everyone who is connected online. I'm going to lead you through a very simple but powerful prayer. Number one, I want you to believe in that prayer. Number two, I want you to pray it with faith in your heart, not as though reciting a poem. I want you to believe Jesus is in this place and the Bible says the Lord is nigh them that call upon him. So I'm going to request that you lift your right hand if you can please, high above your head as a sign of surrender. Now say this after me as loud as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for my sin i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I'm a child of God. I go from glory to glory and grace to grace. Amen. Now, let me speak a blessing upon you in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare based on the authority of God's word. And on account of your confession, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. In the name of Jesus, I declare that eternal life is yours. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The grace to live the victorious Christian life is imparted upon you. And you go from glory to glory and grace to grace. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Now please guide me. Okay, just, just a moment. Let me just give you an instruction. Do we have someone here? Okay, so this side. So here's what you will do for me. Please, all of you in concert, I want you to move to my right. That will be your left. You will have counselors just have a word and a prayer with you in one minute, and then you'll be back to your seat. Thank you. When you go, you are able to fill your form whilst you are with them. Let's honor them as they go. And then counselors, lift the placards, please, and direct them. They all move to my right and then you sort them whilst they are there. God bless you. Keep clapping, Koinonia. Thank you, Jesus. Are you tired of clapping? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. It is right here that we come to the end of this journey that began on Wednesday. It's been 
it's been a very long journey from Wednesday for walkers, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and now by the grace and the mercies of God, we've had the first service for Ionia UK. Hallelujah. Pastor, thank you. Thank you and your dear wife. I appreciate you so greatly. And I appreciate every man and every woman of God here, whether or not I had the time to acknowledge you specifically. We're a house of honor, and I want you to know that we love you and we honor you as touching the grace that you carry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We're about to wrap up, and then like you heard, we have, just like we... We provided um, buses. I'm sure that they're limited. I'm not sure they're able to take more than 500 people. So once we're done, please let me encourage that you walk with the protocol and the security department so that they guide you on how to reach for your buses and then to be on your way back. But I want to say thank you to everyone. First, the walkers once again, and then to everyone who made it for this service. I want you to know that you made history. Thank you. Koinonia Abuja, may God bless you. Koinonia Global, God bless you, the body of Christ. Thank you so very much. Now I speak the blessing of, of God upon your life. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus the wisdom needed for the next level of your spiritual experience. You receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will rest upon you that you will know what to do per season and per time. You will hear a voice from behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. I call you spiritual people. I call you discerning people. I call you prosperous people. I call you loving people. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that death and tragedy is far from your habitation. I'm praying for you that you will experience favor like never before. Let the goodness of God wrap you throughout the remaining part of 2024 in the name of Jesus. And that every long-standing issue, an issue that has been there for a long time, you've prayed, you've fasted, I agree with you one last time, let it turn for you for a testimony. For all those who will be traveling across the various parts of the UK, and outside the UK, I bless your trips. I bless your journeys in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare there shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. When men say there is a casting down for you, I declare that there is a lifting up. I call you Beulah and Hephzibah. The hand of God is upon you for good. The Lord himself will touch the heart of men for your sake. Your love for Jesus will never wax cold. It will wax hotter and hotter. The fire upon your prayer altar will never quench. It will burn and burn brighter and brighter. In the name of Jesus, trusting God for a job, may my God give you a good job. Trusting God for establishment, may my God establish you. In the name of Jesus, I declare that the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from your tent. You will go from glory to glory. This is our year of exceeding great reward. May your reward come to you in the name of Jesus. I bless your September. I bless your October. I bless your November. I bless your December. I say it again, September be blessed. October be blessed. November be blessed, December be blessed, good news all the way, miracles all the way, favor all the way, joy all the way. And now may the God of peace himself give you peace always and by all means. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercies. We depart in peace. We are led forth with joy. It is good news all the way in Jesus' name. Let's hold hands with someone by your left and right if you can, and then we share the grace together. One, two, go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let it rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Congratulations. Please give 10 people a big hug and then see you in 2025. Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.